So Amber, can you give us the highlights? Take us through um, anything else you wanted to share about your biography. I originally came from Australia and I've been singing my whole life. Um, Madonna is who made me want to sing. When I was about six years old, I heard, I think it was Lucky Star. And I was like starting to sing all her songs. And I was saying to my parents, I want to be a singer. So Madonna is really what made me a singer. I used to dress up as her and oh. swear I was Madonna. Like anybody that came over to visit us, family, friends, I was dressed up in character as Madonna, like with the little, you know, skirt on and the crosses and the beauty spot and the scarf in my hair and just... I was serious about it and there are photos that my parents have kept and I've posted a couple and it's quite funny. Yeah. So yeah, oh. basically I started with um, music. I came from a musical family. My dad played drums in the in a band. Um, my sisters were uh, dancers and we all learned dance. Like we did calisthenics and we did, um, my sisters learned tap dancing and uh, I did jazz ballet, I think for about four or five years. So is the one that you know they would say at the end of the concert oh can you sing a song after we've done our dances mm -hmm. like can you be the guest singer at the end so I've been singing on stage since I was about six or seven years old and one of the very first songs I did was memory from cat some pretty high like standards even at that young age I sung um the greatest love of all by Whitney Houston when I was about eight years old Oh, I sung it and I used to compete mm. with like other um, artists that were older than me and um, mm. and I did win a couple I will say at a young age as a little girl I'd win sometimes against the 16 year olds so for me it was like it wasn't about winning it was just that people enjoyed my singing and I thought it would mm. be a part of my life and then obviously I was influenced by Kylie Minogue from Australia our you know our cleaner version of Madonna so to speak. Okay. And I love <laughs> Kylie, um, Tina Arena, John Farnham, a lot of the Australian singers, Vanessa Amorosi, um, and then obviously Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston, two complete highlights for me, and Tony Braxton. That when I heard them, I was just like, that's it. I just mm. I love what they do and I want to do what they're doing. Yes. And I, that's a great transition point, and it kind of leads us into what is really fun um, for this podcast is to find out about your music journey. And so that was a great intro. Can you tell us more about your journey making your latest single, Get Back Up? Yes. Um, basically, um, I have, as weird as this sounds, I have a um, Mariah Carey Instagram fan page that I built um, about five years ago just to, I used to collect stuff when I was a little bit older. I'd paste the pictures from magazines in like scrapbooks. And um, so for me, it's like having a digital scrapbook of my favorite like Mariah moments. And so um, because of Mariah, I'm not even kidding. I've met and had some of the most incredible opportunities I've ever had in my life indirectly through her because of my site and because of the affiliation with her music and some of the people that have come to me and we've spoken and that's Golden. And I had no idea that listening to his music growing up in Australia that I would ever get to work with him because you hear the mm -hmm. songs, you hear, you know, like I want to dance with somebody Mm -hmm. um, I knew you were waiting for me by Aretha Franklin and George Michael. You hear them and you sing along when you're young. Like, I love these songs from the eighties, you know? And so learning who he was to the point where now I've done two songs with him, I'm just like blown away. And it was all through my Mariah Carey page. That's how we met. And I reached out to him and we ended up doing one song together released in um, August last year called nothing can break this love. And I wrote that with mm. my boyfriend um, as well. So we both wrote that and worked with Narada. And then recently we did Get Back Up. And that's like an inspirational, just keep on fighting, don't give up and just keep going. And that's kind of the story of my life. I love that. And, and who was that again? Narada the... Michael Walden. 
Narada Michael Walden. Oh, thanks. A, a brilliant songwriter, producer, incre and now he's actually the new drummer of Journey, the official new oh, drummer. Oh, no way. I love yeah. Journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've got an exciting new lineup, and they have Randy Jackson on bass from American Idol, like Randy Jackson. Oh, my so, gosh. No. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. So I'm oh. very honored. Yeah. So, Amber, listening to your music, I hear the Mariah Carey in your voice. Like, I, the, your vocals are just so powerful. Did you train, like, um, when did you start studying or writing music? Did you do training for your voice, or was that just all natural? All self-taught. It all came naturally, and just from singing wow. uh, to those kind of singers, the Madonnas, the Whitney Houstons, the Mariahs, the Tony Braxtons, Christina Aguilera, early days, like all of that combined is what I kind of did to have my own sound. Mm. So you had this incredible gift when you were very young and what, what drew you into the music industry? Like what, when was it that you knew you wanted to dive in? Um, you know, I think for me, I, Australia is such a wonderful place, but I felt like after a while, after doing theater and music and getting in every talent show, I wanted to take it further. And I remember <laughs> superficial as this sounds, I remember watching, um, Beverly Hills 90210. Yes. And I was, a I was so <laughs> young and I said to my parents, I want to go to America. That's what I want to do. And I want to go to that place where they're going to school. It was so shallow, but for me, it was like a dream. I was like, wow, I want to be like that. So I kind of, um, you know, I had an audition for Neighbours, the very show that started like Margot Robbie and Kylie Minogue, like it's our big soap opera in Australia. And mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to audition for them. And so it was like, do I do that or do I just take off and take a chance? And I took a chance and I left with like a few hundred dollars to my name and a couple of suitcases. And I knew a couple of people here, but I literally have just maneuvered my way through just the US. I've lived in Atlanta. I've lived mm -hmm. in South Carolina, New York for a little bit and LA most of the time. But yeah, I just figured that it would be a better opportunity for me here music wise. But now that I'm older, I've actually got more opportunities now than I ever have when I was younger. So it's like amazing. Mm. I was going to give up on music at one point, you know? Okay. Tell us about the new opportunity. The Well, that is a question later on in the podcast, but I'm kind of curious we're there now so tell us more about that because I think that can be really an inspiring um I hear a lot of people in the music industry say well you know once once you're over 20 uh how do you fit in how do you stay relevant in the music industry and I I love hearing from women who have charged through i mean like like the mariah carries like the uh dolly partons and the you know and all of these other yeah. artists yeah yeah who are mm -hmm. still performing still rocking it so please feel free to share that that moment in time with us um i really believe for a long time as you get as you're younger um, you know, I was bullied in school. I dealt with a lot of mm -hmm. bullying and I went through an awkward stage. So that was very difficult for me. And mm -hmm. it was Mariah Carey's music when I was 13 years old that basically saved my soul. How mm -hmm. tormented I felt being bullied and just never feeling good enough. So um, I always carried that with me because it you don't forget about it. Like it's something that always kind of haunts you, even though people say, oh, you have to forget about it and move on. But there's certain things where it triggers you and you're like, oh, that's why I feel like this. I remembered back to that time, you know, but for me, um, I think I started being less hard on myself as I got older and I realized that people were finally really starting to appreciate me as an artist and mm -hmm. the fact that I write my own songs and I write from the heart and I also try to write feel good songs for other people to feel inspired because I just feel like the art of songwriting and good lyrics and good real music has been lost for so long. So I'm trying to keep a 90s, even 80s, whatever, into new style 
type of a vibe into my music because I want people to be reminded it doesn't matter what age you are or what you look like or whatever, as long as you keep true to yourself and you don't sell out just to suit somebody else, you'll definitely, um, you know, you'll be happy within yourself and whoever recognizes that and gives you an opportunity, um, that's a blessing. It's a bonus, you know, so you do it for the love mm. of it, really. Mm. Thanks for sharing that, Amber. It, it sounds like you've found a, a really good place in the industry, like a place that's fulfilling and rewarding and just, just a place to create and be inspired. And I think that that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so can you, ex I know you talked a little bit about who you're inspired by, can you share with us in your hands, um, what's your creative process like? Um, you know, I don't play an instrument. I really wish that I did because if I did play piano, I'd probably be writing all the time. But for me, you know, since I'm limited to what I play, everything is in my head. So if I hear a melody, I might record a little voice clip or if I hear it, if I go through online and find some tracks that I might like that I might hear and I'm like, oh, I'm going to write to that. And so it just depends on what grabs me and I hear about it. I'm not one of these people that just writes every time and people say, you should be writing. But I'm like, I don't write unless I'm inspired and unless mm -hmm. I'm hearing something in my head that's going to turn into possibly a hit song. Like when I write, I feel like I want every song of mine to be a hit because it takes so long sometimes to get it to that level of really professional where it's exactly like radio playable and that's kind of what I try to put into my music and making of music you know mm, that's amazing yes yeah it, you're definitely inspired and you're okay with just, just waiting for not you know, it's not forced inspiration. It's, it, you're really true to yourself. I think it's important, especially yeah. as women, because there's a lot of people that try to change us or they tell us we need to look a certain way or whatever. And I think once you're happy, it's something I work on every day because I'm not a hundred percent happy with myself. I'm very hard on myself, mm. but I think the biggest thing with me is my strength. I think that's mm. what makes me if anybody was to say, oh, what has she done? They can see that I've never given up. And I think that that's a big quality, the most important quality to have. Yes, tenacity and grit and strength and, and empowerment and independence and freedom as a woman yeah. in this industry. Yes, I can see that in you. You found that. But, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> so what's an average day like for you with music? Um, I sing, basically. Any given chance I get, I might do a little video clip to put on my Facebook page just so people can, you know, watch a little current video of myself until my real original song's ready to be released. So I just sing as much as I can. I sing in the car. I sing along with my favorite artists. And I think I just keep active because it's like a muscle. It's like if you don't work out, you're going to keep it up and sing at whatever level. So you're exercising your vocal cords. Exercise, yep. Keeping the vocal cords just at their peak performance state so you, it's like you you have to see you know all the time so that's yeah. great yeah so do you um let's go to another question is there a hidden meaning in any of your music or deeper meaning that you want your fans to know about um I think that I want people to know that you should I think my biggest message is always about love it's always mm -hmm. about love, whether it's love for the world, love for who you are, love for your boyfriend, your dog. It's an underlying message of mm -hmm. love, really. You know, whether that's um, putting it out there that you're going to find true love one day. I think I, I live, I guess in some ways I live in a fantasy world when it comes to love, you know, because I always look at it like I want 
my life to be, but it's like, it's more of a fantasy, like a little escape for people to believe that there really is true love out there and you'll find it and just don't give up. Yeah. You got, yeah. You can't give up. Can't give up on true love. Can't yeah. give up on music either. Yeah. True <laughs> love, whether that's a, a relationship or whether it's an, a hobby, it's your true love, whatever that is, you know? Yes. I love that. Um, do you collaborate with others in the studio and what's that process like? Well, usually, um, say with somebody like Narada, uh, mm -hmm. him and I went back on some ideas through email and through text. Like we'd send a little, I'd, he'd send a little clip of the track he did and then I'll write to it and he'll be like, yeah, that sounds good. And then we just kind of put it all together and he's like, all right, let me know when you want to come to San Francisco and record it and then it just goes from there and when you work with somebody at that level that's Franklin and Whitney Houston you know that you're just going to get the best quality you can ever get you're not going to deal with somebody fiddling around in the studio like oh sorry oh my god I don't know what I'm doing I've dealt with so many of those people that have taken my mm -hmm. money and given me a bad quality product or they've done mm -hmm. things that were not very nice you know and so for me working with people at this level um, even at my age is a blessing and I don't take any of it for granted because it's really incredible to see the people at that level and how they work and just how professional and how quick they are. Like there's mm -hmm. everything's just incredible. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So it sounds like you've had a, you've had a journey in the studio, like with people You've seen it all. You've seen a lot. I can tell I have. from my <laughs> <laughs> I have. Are there, are there any tips you can, you can share on like, if you go into a studio session and you're like, wait a second, it should be going like this. Like from what you've learned to your really great studio experiences now, is there any advice you would give anybody on that? You know, I think the best thing is to be smart have common sense, you know, remember what your parents or your grandparents or your guardians taught you. If something doesn't feel right, it usually isn't. You listen to your gut instinct. And I always think, especially starting out until you build a rapport with whoever you're working with, take somebody with you. You don't want to go by yourself. If you've met somebody, you know, that put an ad up saying, I want a singer and you go over there by yourself, you're kind of giving yourself, like it's kind of giving like, you know, like that you don't have any support and people can take advantage of you like that. So mm -hmm. um, when you take somebody very trustworthy with you or you have an acting manager or a real manager with you and you suss it out, it's about, that's what you do and you just build your relationships like that with the right people and you go on, on their product, what they tell you they can do and if they deliver that, and they do the right thing by you, it's going to make you want to go back again. But if they don't, you got to cut them off. There's no, unless there's a really good excuse, you don't want to waste your time with time wasters because there's a lot of people out there that don't know what they're doing and that take your money and they won't give you what you want at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, very wise. Thanks for sharing that, Amber. It, it sounds like you've just navigated everything up to this point and now you're now you know and i i hope that making um the get back up single was a fun experience in the studio. it sounds like it was um, it was amazing and my producer had his wife who i'm really close to and her twin sister sing background in my song so that was amazing too it was like a little moment that we all shared together and my boyfriend did the guitar and it's like a little funky guitar so that's pretty cool oh how fun yes yeah. that's yeah. how music should be i love that yeah it's nice i'm really hoping that we can get it on the radio because i think people need to hear it i think it's a very uplifting song yeah we need that right now yes it's a good song 